In this video I'm showing you the setup that I created for creating this array. So this is the a cloud that is swirling by a pop in and over time we see a logo stitch out on the cloud. And you see here slowly it created but we just see the cloud simulation. So this is the result of simulation, very heavy geometry, over 28 gigabyte for storing, just a simulation of this piece. So here is the setup, so starting from this part is the logo, and I just extract this piece of the logo, and transform it and uh, rotate it on the ground. Easier process. Next we have the cloud mesh which is simply just a grid, remesh, UV over that and group the pin area over that to keep them pin so they don't move. Uh, and they go well on cloud which is actually most of the parameters are just default and well on solver. The thing is to create the dynamic pin I needed to create a mask for the border of the logo. So this is the logo. I create a curve. There's multiple ways to create outline edge for a Geometry, this is one of them. So I create a curve, so we have just one piece of curve. By using random selected, which is a labs node, as you see, we have just one point group with 35 selected points. Now, I use this created group by polycode to create multiple pieces uh, of the curves, poly curves. So if we use explode view, we can see how it works. So now we have multiple pieces of the curves and using another card and animating the first part we don't need second. So the first part is uh, first U is animating. Next, I use this uh, old school method to create a mask attribute. So we have um, this mask over the geometry, cloud geometry. Okay. On the other hand. We have this, uh, this mask, so I use the logo, pass it to boolean, and extract out this part of the inside logo. So this part extracted, and using uh, polyx root insert to animate Part and passing uh, to this flow to create another mask. So we see gradually creating a mask on the cloud geometry and passing it to solve. So in the solver we use this mask for creating dynamic pin over the edge of the logo 
and this mask to do animate wrestling uh, to create uh, a much flatter area in this uh, against the other area. If you see the simulation, we see that these parts are paint and these parts are flatter than this area causing by that mask that we created. For creating those stitch actually is very simple. We have again this part, this uh, outer edge and by using the same curve animation we uh, created a sphere on every point. We have this simple and I cash out we are caching the simulation I use a edge group to create a group of edges apply this attribute over them and use it in subdividing since it is very heavy mesh I explain in a separate scene how creasing works for you how the crease works so here is a simple sign. I have a cube. I selected this edge and create a group by this edge and applied the crease attribute. And on top of that, I create a subdivide node. So without crease, it is look like this. By creasing, it is look like this. So the crease attribute comes it. To keep this uh, this edge as a sharp edge, okay. You can control this or on subdivide node itself. You can apply a globally crease weight over every edge. So if you want to be very specific, you can use this method okay let's play this too also this is how it works next to render I use karma Geometry from simulation. So this is the cloud geometry. This is the acid geometry. Actually, I separate them in the uh, object level. Easy to access and evaluate and material. Also, here I imported every camera, so it is just every object and camera. Now I merge everything here and pass to lighting. Next I use a dome light uh, using a texture HDRI downloaded from HDRI Hoven, giving uh, some kind of greenish color. Let me start on my XP here. And then Using two area light, a big area light here and there, and sending to Karma render setting and USD render. After render, to composite in another program like Neoch to show you the correct way to import with correct color space since we are using. ACES color space in New York, in Houdini, sorry. Uh, we need to set up it correctly, so I press S. Press, make sure the FPS is the same. Then in color management, I choose OCIO, and color config, I choose one of uh, ACES config. That's all for importing, and I import the sequence. I 
1.72 yes so let's compare this to 172 We shouldn't see any difference in color when we are watching because in uh, uh, Neoc we are looking at the viewport in sRGB monitor and also in viewport in Houdini we are watching the result in a sRGB monitor so we shouldn't see any difference. If I, for example, I didn't set up the OCIO Nuke and it would be a default Nuke, we see a difference, okay? And it shouldn't be like this. So, before compositing or importing in whatever software, I make sure the color space is correct. So the node itself, it is default in linear, which is correct. It is input transform, it's linear, EXR, without any color space. And for output, I just again need to output it. Let I put the sample. PNG. Let's see. We are exporting PNG, okay? From this. So this is one seven two one seven two output. If we see the output transform, it is default, which is not correct. We should use ACs. Actually, output. Output. Now, if I render and look at this tree, <coughs> we are porting Houdini, we are porting Neo, we can export it as RGB image like PNG. And in case exporting as uh, EXOR, so EXOR, the output transform should be default thin linear. Okay, so it comes as linear and goes out as linear. So if I export Sample EXR and check it again inside Nuke. Again, we shouldn't see any difference between these two. Okay, one, two, two. Shouldn't see any difference. That's how you need to manage the import and export. Top of that, if uh, for example, I'm doing some grading. If you make it wrong, so for example, if it is default another sample, sample two, then if you watch it, this is different. See, the color is washed out. It's just simply because the output transform, you need to choose the correct one before export. And that's all for this video, thank you and see you.